Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Please remember to like and subscribe for more maths videos. In this video, I'm going to be discussing changing the subject of the formula. Now, what does that mean, changing the subject of the formula? Well, in order to understand what changing the subject of the formula means, I think we need to understand what the subject of the formula means. So the subject of the formula is just a fancy way of saying that's what you're solving for, right? So the subject of the formula will be what you're actually solving for. So to change the subject of the formula would be exactly that. You're going to change what you're solving for. So each equation has different variables or different unknowns. And the key to changing the subject of the formula means that you would be able to calculate any of the unknowns for any formula. And it wouldn't have to be what the formula started as. Changing the subject of the formula means that we just have to ensure that whatever we're trying to calculate, whichever variable we want to solve for, it needs to be two things. It needs to be alone and it needs to be positive. Alone, nothing attached to it. Positive, not negative. It doesn't matter whether it's on the left-hand side of the equal sign or the right-hand side of the equal sign, so long as it is both alone and positive. Changing the subject of the formula is really easy. All we have to do is remember to do opposite operation. So if it was being added, we're now going to subtract. We're going to get rid of addition by subtracting, get rid of subtraction by adding, get rid of multiplication by dividing, get rid of a square root by squaring. And by getting rid of, we are isolating slowly but surely. We're getting that variable alone and positive. So whatever variable you want to solve for, that's the variable we're going to change the subject of the formula for or to. What am I saying? You're going to understand by the end of this video. Holding thumbs that you understand by the end of this video. If we have y plus w equals c and we want to make y the subject of this formula, in order to make y the subject of the formula, we need to isolate that y. So we need to get the y alone and positive. In order to do that, we need to get rid of what's stopping the y from being alone, which in this case is the positive w. So how would I get rid of positive w? Well, what's the opposite of adding? I would subtract, so I would subtract w, but it's still an equation, so we have to keep it balanced. So what I do to the one side of the equation, I have to remember to do to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract w from both sides. So therefore, to get y alone, y positive, y will equal, the c was there first, stays first, stays the same, minus the w. Looking at the next one, we want to again isolate the y. In order to isolate the y, I want to get rid of what's stopping the y from being alone, which in this case is the negative 2g. The 2g is being subtracted, so the opposite of subtraction is addition. So I'm going to add 2g to both sides. Therefore, w will equal, the n will stay the same, stay first, plus 2g. All right, if I have y over c equal to w, I want to isolate the y. So I need to say, what does y over c mean? What is another way of saying y over c? Well, that would be y divided by c. So if y is being divided by c, in order to get rid of division, I'm going to do the opposite of division, which is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by c. That way, the divided by c and the times c are going to cancel out. But what I do to the one side, I need to do to the other side. So therefore, y would equal w times c, which is c w. All right, if I have the next example of the square root of y is equal to g, I want to get rid of the square root. So in order to get rid of the square root, I am going to square both sides of the equation. So the square root of y squared becomes just y equal to g 
squared. If I have r y equal to c, I want to isolate this y. What's stopping the y from being alone? The r. What is happening between that r and that y? They're being multiplied together. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So I'm going to divide by r. That way the r times and the divide by r are going to cancel out. What I do to the one side, I do to the other side. So I'm going to divide the other side by r as well. So therefore, ry divided by r just leaves me with y equal to what c divided by r. Well, that will stay c over r. All right, if we have 4x plus c equals w, and we want to make x the subject of the formula. Now, there are two things stopping the x from being alone. Number one is the plus c, and number two is the coefficient of 4. And we want to get rid of both of them. We're going to get rid of the plus c first, before the divided by 4. How do I get rid of plus c? Well, I'm going to subtract c from both sides. So 4x plus c minus c. The plus c and the minus c are going to cancel out, so you're just going to be left with 4x. Equal to w minus c, I'm doing this side of the equal sign now, so w minus c stays w minus c. But now I still want to get rid of this 4. So what's happening between the 4 and the x is multiplication. How do I get rid of multiplication? I divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. The trick now is that we have two terms being divided by 4, so I'm just going to put them into brackets. 4x, if I'm looking at the left-hand side of the equal sign, 4x divided by 4 gives me x equal to, and now I need to divide the w and the minus c by 4, so that will be w minus c all divided by 4. All right, if I have 2x plus 2y equals p, and I am wanting to isolate this x. So to isolate the x, I'm going to start by getting rid of this plus 2y. How do I get rid of plus 2y? I minus 2y. What I do to the one side, I'm going to do to the other side. So on the left-hand side, I will be left with 2x equal to, on the right-hand side, I'll be left with p minus 2y. Now I still want to get the x by itself, so I'm going to get rid of that coefficient of 2. What is happening between the 2 and the x? It's multiplication. How do I get rid of multiplication? I divide. What am I going to divide by? I'm going to divide by 2. What I do to the one side? I'm going to do to the other side, but the other side has two terms, so I'm just going to put them into brackets. So now I'm going to have on the left hand side, 2x divided by 2, the 2's cancel, I'm left with just x, and p minus 2y divided by 2 is p minus 2y over 2. I could simplify it as p over 2 minus y, because the 2's would cancel in the y. Alright, looking at this equation, I want to isolate my x. Now there's a lot going on with this x. It's having t added to it and x plus t as a whole is being divided by m and that's equal to 2c. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by getting rid of this divided by m. How do we get rid of divided by m? We do the opposite of divide which is multiply and we're going to multiply by m but we're going to do it on both sides. When I have x plus t over m times m, the divided by m, I'm cancelling by timesing by m. So that's why they're going to cancel out. So I'm going to be left with x plus t equal to, so that's what I'm left on the left hand side. On the right hand side, I have 2c times m and 2c times m is 2cm. Now I want to still isolate that x, so I want to get rid of the plus t. How do I get rid of plus t? I am going to minus t 
on both sides. So therefore, x plus t minus t, those are going to cancel. So I'm just going to be left with x equal to 2cm minus t. I can't subtract them. They're unlike terms. So I'm going to have 2cm minus t. All right, looking at a equals a half bx, I want to isolate the x. How am I going to isolate the x? Well, I want to get rid of what is attached to it. I'm going to start by getting rid of the half times. So to get rid of a half, I am going to times by two because a half times two is one. So what I do to the one side, I'm going to do to the other side. I'm left with two times a, which is two a, is equal to b x. But I still want to get the x by itself. So I want to get rid of this b times. To get rid of times, I divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by b. So therefore, x will equal 2a over b. What could make you want to change the subject of a formula in maths practically? Well, if you think about the formula for the area of a circle, so the area of a circle is pi r squared. So if you look at the formula as area equals pi r squared, you're calculating as it stands the area because the area, the a, is alone and positive. So that means that if you put in the value for the radius into this formula using pi, you would then be able to calculate the area. But what if you were given the area and you needed to calculate the radius? Well, what you would do is you would then isolate the radius. You would change the subject of the formula that the radius would be what you were calculating. So if you look at the radius over here, you can see what is stopping the radius from being alone. And the first thing stopping the radius from being alone is the pi. And the second thing stopping the radius from being alone is the exponent of 2. So we're going to start by getting rid of pi. What's happening between the pi and the radius? It's being multiplied. So it's pi times the radius squared. What's the opposite of multiplication? Division. So we would divide by pi. We would divide by pi on both sides. So now we'd have the radius squared equal to the area divided by pi. Then what we would do is we would then want to get rid of the squared. How do we get rid of squared? Well, we are going to square root both sides. So when we square root the radius squared, the square and the square root are going to cancel and we're going to be left with just the radius equal to, but then we can't square root the rest. So we're going to keep the area divided by pi under the square root sign. What about Pythagoras? The hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. So the hypotenuse squared is equal to side 1 squared plus side 2 squared. So the way that the formula is written here, we are calculating c squared. But what if we wanted to calculate the length of a or b given the other two lengths? So for this one, I'm going to isolate the a. In order to isolate the a, I want to start by getting rid of the b squared. So to get rid of plus b squared, I'm going to subtract b squared from both sides. So that means that I would have a squared is equal to c squared minus b squared. But I wouldn't want the squared. So I want to get rid of squared. What's the opposite of square? Square root. So I'm going to square root both sides of this equation because then the square root cancels with the square and I'd be left with a equal to. Now the first thing is that you had c squared minus b squared on the right hand side. So that's why I square rooted both terms. The other thing that you need to remember is that you cannot square root over a minus sign. So it's not going to be a is equal to c minus b because there's a minus sign. If there's a plus and a minus sign under your square root sign, you can't just square root the terms. So if I square root a squared and I'm left with a, 
that means that I would need to keep it c squared minus b squared underneath the third. And that's how we change the subject of the formula, as well as why we would change the subject of the formula. I hope that you've learned something. I hope that you're practicing. I hope that you're taking notes while you're watching the videos. Remember, the more you do, the better you'll be. See you soon.